Hey, this is Greg Hawks, and I'm here with Dean DaCosta, and this is what we're going to be calling Dueling Sorcerers. And what we're going to be doing today is just talking about some of the different concepts and strategies that we each use uh, when we're looking for specific jobs. So it's not going to be us actually fighting or, or truly doing, it's more about the different perspectives. So I'm going to actually kick it to Dean so he can talk about uh, one of our first jobs, nurses. Hey, thanks a lot, Greg. So, um, you know, everybody's looking for different types of roles and stuff, and, and we decided to start this uh, particular podcast off. We're going to do nurses. Now, we're going to pick a new one each month, but nurses and doctors today. So, for me, when I think about it, I always believe it's starting easiest moving forward. Now, we're going to ignore ATS, CRM, job boards, LinkedIn, all that. We're going to try to ignore that. We're going to try to do Thing other than that, but still, for me, I want to start with the easiest. So, for me, the easiest is starting with what I call the greatest untapped place for finding talent there is, and that's Facebook. Facebook has 3.5 billion people. Just to give you an idea, according to LinkedIn, they only have 500 million. Now, that's still a lot, but when you get rid of the redundancies and people with with um, multiple profiles, people that don't have enough to know what they do, fake profiles, people that are no longer living, there's only about 240 million. Um, 3.5 billion to Facebook has already been scraped for most of that, so there isn't as much of that. Right? So, first of all, you gotta be able to search on Facebook, which in itself can be a little difficult because of the way they change things. There are several tools that can help you. I'm gonna use the tool called Intelligent Search, which is a Chrome extension created by a friend of ours named Shane. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on it. We're in Facebook and I'm going to say that I want to find jobs. That's basically what are they doing. Now I want them to be currently doing it. And I'm going to just put nurse because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a nurse. Now I'm also going to add a location because you know, in my, I kind of want them to be in the general location I'm at. So I'm going to put in Seattle. Now keep in mind, there are other tools you can use with this. Uh, Seekout has a great Facebook searching tool. Um, and there are others that you can use that will help you find this, uh, find these types of people. There's also an advanced Facebook search Chrome extension that can help you find these people. I always so use, I, hey Dean, I always use searches back because it's a good backup, it's web-based. So that's one yep. of the ones I always use. Yeah, and it's interesting because the advanced search book, the advanced Facebook search Chrome extension is basically searches back into a Chrome extension. Because yeah. when you look at it, it's like, but no, that's great. So I'm here and I've got a boatload of people who are nurses, who are living in Seattle. Now, as you know, with Facebook, they have a rolling scroll, which means you, it's hard to get to the bottom. Now, for me, I use a tool called Scroll to the Bottom because it's quick. It's one push, gets to the bottom, and it loads instantly. I estimate it saves anywhere between five and 10 seconds from doing it manually. Just push the button and it does it. So I've done it a couple of times. So I've got probably 40 people. The question now becomes getting them out. So for me, I'm gonna use a tool called Zapdip. And the reason I'm going to use it is one, it is capable of scraping people out of Facebook, but it'll also enhance and try to find contact information. It'll grab their Facebook URL. It might match it up with LinkedIn URLs. It might do this, that, whatever. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, to do that, there's a couple of different ways. Um, and I'm talking fast because, you know, we don't want to make these too long. Um, so I'm going to start with, hey, I'm being honest. Yeah, I'm going to start no, with- No, no, I'm, I'm the same way, dude. It's all good. Me. I'm going to start with the extract some from page uh, zap. There's two different ways you can zap: extract from page or bulk. Type. And the extract from page work. I got them all. I've got 39, so I was about right. I said around 40, and I've got them all. So I can extract them, and it's extracting right now. But it's also enhancing. And when I when it gets done, which it's already done, so that's pretty cool. That was quick. They're all here, and just to make sure, I will select all and go into actions and ask it to enrich just in case, because it enriches as you bring them in, but sometimes you want to enrich a second time just to make sure. Um, so it was able to enrich quite a few of them, and it even found some email addresses for, for quite a few. I'd say about about half of them, it found email addresses for. So I'm happy to pick this up. Now you're probably going, okay, great thing, but what do I do with the others? Well, you take the list and you upload it to Seek Out, Love so, hire tool, just to name three places and let them do the rest. And there you go. Quick, simple, easy peasy. Now, I actually had a friend of mine who's working on nurses. That's why I wanted to do this because I'd done this before about a month ago. The exact process. I got them 200 people in Minneapolis that were nurses. 
I did the exact same process I just talked about, getting what they got, what um, Zap Info got me, and then uploading. My hands on time, about five minutes, and I ended up with 200 people with email. Because you gotta remember, everything's automated. You push a button, it does the rest. And that's it. So that's how simple this can be. Now, again, I did it the simple way. Greg is gonna do it a little more, what I call, I call what I just did a level two source of function. Greg's gonna hit you with a level six, which means a lot more intricate, a lot more using your head, a lot more following breadcrumbs, a lot more putting different things together. And to that end, I'll so, give it back to Greg. Yeah, when, when you look for doctors, I mean, you can go through the normal doctor sites, you can go through health grades, you can site search Doximity, you can look uh, through RateMD and some of the other tools that help you with that. Higher tool has a lot of medical stuff built in. Um, the, the, so identification is, you've got to use some different methods. Um, a trick that I use is literally Googling, find a doctor or find a nurse practitioner. A lot of times that can lead you to a directory. Directories are huge when you're looking for doctors. Um, I found, I've found i found entire faculty directories when I'm looking for doctors and, and a lot of those have direct phone numbers, direct, direct emails, work emails. And that, that becomes the issue is not necessarily identifying the doctors and, and what specialties uh, they're, they're working on. It's, it's engagement, it's catching the doctors. How do you, how do you reel them in? And so that's, that's a real challenge in itself. Um, but there's, there's lots of resources out there. Um, I know, <clears throat> especially when I was looking on the science side, you can look uh, at, at their publications. Um, Google Scholar is a good example. Um, some, some other resources like, like patents. A lot of these, especially high tech folks, have patents that you can pull an entire list. Um, and then that some of those, those tools that Dean mentioned they don't scrape them as well. You have to you have to dig into the data miner. You have to dig into some other things and, and do some custom searches. Um, but I was able to find a lot of a lot of doctors in, in that respect. Uh, faculty directories again, uh, listservs. I was able to, to to Google a couple things and, and find a listserv. And there's just a wealth of information there. And a lot of times they had direct emails. But you have to do a lot of digging. It's it's really truly data mining uh, to find what you're looking for. Um, there's, there, there's just a ton of resources that you can utilize. A lot of them I have on, on my website, the healthcare sourcing toolbox. Uh, if you're looking for a head start, um, one of the things that I did do, uh, I used an old school method using robots text to basically pull an entire side map of a hospital, and it just had listings of nurses, doctors, everything you can imagine. But what do you do with that data? So that's that's that can be a real challenge in itself. So uh, because when you're when you're talking doctors and nurses, I mean Dean, you can you can vouch for this. They're on the floor a lot of times. You can't yep. you, just, you just can't just call them up and expect them to, to answer. You have to leave emails. You have to leave uh, use Facebook messaging. I've done that, and it's been successful in the past. So you just have to think of different resources. Um, you know wh where do these people go? Where do these people live? Where are they communicating? And that's really where, where I, I, I search for these folks. So, you know, no, not, not as many fancy tools in regards to that. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it does take a lot of research. You have to really know what you're looking for, especially if you're talking um, uh, uh, the different specialties like cardiology and things like that. Uh, and it, it depends on if it's private practice or not. If it's a private practice rec, uh, you can look on MPI directories. There's a, a ton of those uh, because if you're a private practice person, each person needs a, an MPI number. So that was a resource that we utilized as well as using, uh, I talk about FEC.gov a lot. Dean, have you used FEC? One, one, one thing that I know you can, well, first of all, uh, Greg said something very interesting there about knowing what you look for and understanding that that's one thing that I've always preached. I know Greg has preached, a lot of people preach, anybody who's been in the recruiting world, staffing, sourcing role, research roles for a long period ride, understand, and I just use the word, research comes first. Make sure you understand what you're looking for, because a lot of times as you research what you're looking for, the answer of where to go becomes very obvious. I mean, there are sites out there that do nothing more than tell you 
a rating on the doctor. I went to this doctor, I gave him four stars. Well, guess what? If they're a doctor and they got four stars, there's usually a connection to way to contact that doctor in that respect. That's how, that's what health grades is. It, I mean, they yeah. have they have direct contact information. They have direct phone numbers. An NPI directory too, direct phone numbers for their private practice, uh, emails. I mean, so you don't you don't have to use a tool to find that stuff. You just have to be able to engage them, engage them in in a unique way. So. And remember, every single state has a board of health or something like that. And if you're a doctor or a nurse in there, you're listed. Now, it'll usually just give a name if they are a doctor or a nurse and if they have any specialties or anything like that. And But it also says where they're working. And that's kept updated. You know where they're working. You got their name. Finding a work email is real simple. And, you know, that that's a lead. I mean, a name, a job title, and, and a company. I mean, that should be enough to, to be able to pull some more information on them. I mean, oh, definitely. I, I mean, honestly, a lot of times it's not, it's not, <laughs> it, it's not using a fancy tool. It's about being able to to research and find people and and reach out to them. So, I mean, yeah, there's there's just a wealth of of information out there, and I can't tell you how many times I've looked on faculty directories and I've been surprised. There's there's health um, professional uh, directories out there just focused. In, in certain realms, like I, I talk about dietitians a lot because I was able to find a ton of them um, through some professional directories through Instagram. Because you think about it, people don't think about this, but what do dietitians take pictures of? They take pictures of food and they post it on Instagram. And a lot of times they had direct uh, emails on on their Instagram account, or they have direct links to their websites, which is something people forget about. If you have a, a direct website, you usually have contact information on it, right? So. You know, something else to consider is if they there are a lot of healthcare insurers out there. Aetna, as an example, they have network provider directories. Yep, and you can just Absolutely. go right in there and find them. Matter of fact, I'm doing it now because I have to make an appointment or something. And 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 I'm looking. I'm like, wow, it's simple, pretty pretty easy. Network provider, done over. Oh, it's it's simple, but people don't think about that. People don't think out outside of you know the normal job boards and hey i mean like nurses are, are all over are all over indeed okay i mean i i used to source for nurses specifically on that and they're they're on that board but if if you're looking for something niche if you're looking for something very specific um you know you've got to look in outside of that i mean i always get a question about dentists too um and you know there's there's directories focused just on dental folks it's, it's just you have to search, you have to find them, you have to use that resource. And then when you have that information, what do you do with it? Well, I usually scrape it and then do more research, whether it's through tools or whether it's just uh, straight Googling, using search engines, things like that to pull more information. And there's some pretty interesting OSINT tools out there um, that can that can really help you do it. And I think a lot of them are on, on Dean's list of <laughs> uh, <laughs> on his on his uh, tool site. So. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's just a lot of information out there and people don't really realize it, um, but it, it can be surprising. I mean, I always talk about the, the listserv thing because that really surprised me one day when I was just kind of diving with, diving in with a, like a mail to operator. And I was able to pull this whole entire listserv, which is which was just phlebotomist all over the place. I was just like, what what did I dive into here? So um, it's, it's kind of like opening a, a, a great big door of information, but you have to be able to tailor that combine tools to to streamline your process and to, to do something with that data right Dean mm -hmm. yeah you've got you know we call them researchers sources whatever I actually call them cyber sleuths <laughs> yep <laughs> that's what we are that's what we really are sourcing sleuths we don't want to call stuff cyber sleuths because that's actually more cyber oriented but, but sourcing Flutes. That is our job. Our job isn't just to do the easy thing. If that's all you want to do, that's great. But just remember when the market changes and there are um, and there and, and, and the market changes, you're going to struggle. I mean, right now there are more jobs than people and how some of these recruiters that can't do anything other than check the database are still employed is beyond me. But if you can be a sourcing sleuth, and that's the word we're going to use from now on, Greg, sourcing sleuth, um, SS. If you are a true source of flutes, you can follow the breadcrumbs. You know how to go from here to there, there to here, then you can work ones. I mean, meetup. There are actually nurses meetup groups. But the problem is most people don't even understand one how to find them. And more importantly, most of them will have a first name and a last initial, and that's it. Well, guess what? 
you can still find them. I'm about to teach my company that I work for how to do it. And I'm probably going to show it when I'm at the next source con. There's still a way to do it. It's just, you got to click here. You got to go here. You got to go. You got to follow the breadcrumbs, but you will find a way to contact them and everything you need to know about it. It can be done, but you got to be a source influence to do it. And you know, that brings up a good point, Dean, because that kind of reminded me of, of, uh, conferences. Conferences are a huge, a, a huge realm that you can dive into for anything, nursing, doctors, I mean, for, for any industry. Uh, I know, I know there's several nursing societies. I know that, I know that because I, I scraped entire, entire conferences of attendees through Sketch because I mean, that's, it, especially if they put it out there and it's out there in the public, that, that can be a huge resource. Um, but again, it's taking that data, it's co combining it with tools that can get you more information and it's streamlining into a, a, a process that makes sense. So everybody's process might be a little bit different, but when it gets to, down to it, you, you have the data and then you have to do something with it. So. I concur. Yeah, so, hey Dean, I think that's, that's a, a pretty good place to stop until the next yep. time. Yep, oh, oh, and next time we're going to attack the one most requested, most wanted, most looked for, most, most, most software development type position out there, Java. And I'm going to help you out. I ain't planning on going, I ain't planning on going to any easy sites. I'm going to actually show you a few places to go where you're going to have to put your hat on and do a little sourcing sleuthing. Yeah, and I've done a little bit of that myself, and I've been kind of surprised with some of the forums and stuff lately about how many different responses I can get. So, yeah, we'll we'll have more on that next time, right, Dean? Oh yes. All right. Well, hey, thanks. Thank you guys for listening in. Um, you can click on the links, uh, Dean's side and my side. It'll be up on the slide of this podcast. So uh, we're gonna continue to do this every month. And thanks for listening in, and please share. Thank <laughs> you.